video about drawing white fur. White fur is tricky, I know a lot of artists struggle to do so, I do myself, but really the principle is the same as drawing any other fur. I've done another video on how to draw fur, a more basic overview of how I go about it, which you can apply to all types of fur, including white fur. It might be useful if you watch the video first, and I'll pop a link below. Anyway, back to the white fur. Here you can see me blocking in the tonal values or the tonal map. Here I'm just trying to place down my mid-tones and establish where the warm and the cool tones are. If you look at white fur, it's never actually white. It reflects colours off its surroundings, such as greens and browns, and it also has cool blues and purples and many other colours running through it. For this demonstration, I've chosen a fairly simple section of white fur to demonstrate. It has some warm and cool grey tones, some blues and some sandy yellowy undertones to it. But do look closely at your reference photo, as you may find lots of other colours within the fur. Sometimes it helps to squint at it, your reference photo that is, that way you don't get distracted so much by all the de little details and you can pick out the basic areas and shapes of colours. This helps you establish your tonal map that I referred to earlier. Going back to this mini demonstration you can see I'm establishing the warm and the cool tones. In the reference photo they seem to be divided up to the left and the right, the cool being on the right side and the warm being on the left. But there is some overlap with some warms creeping into the cool areas and some cool creeping into the warm areas so always pay careful attention to your reference photo to check the placement of the colors i'm not getting too bogged down in detail at this stage this is simply just blocking in the areas and where i want the shapes to go so i can establish the detail later i am however paying careful attention to the length and direction of the fur and replicating that in my pencil strokes as you can see so far I've actually used very little white but here I bring in my saffron Derwent pencil. This is one of my favourite colours for using on white fur to bring in some of the warmer tones. If I do use a white in these early stages it's in the areas where I want to preserve an absolute pure white which really doesn't happen very often when you're painting white fur. But it is worth bearing in mind as it can be hard to achieve a pure white over other colours as the colours underneath can tend to be picked up by the white pastel pencil and thus contaminate it slightly. Stopping is getting that pure white. It can be worked around, particularly with a very soft pastel. But yes, it is worth remembering that if you really do have some very, very, very pure white areas, to block them in at the beginning so you can preserve them. If you do find later that they're too white, you can always tone them down with another colour, such as a cool grey or a warm grey, whatever you need. As you can see I've pretty much finished with my tonal underpainting now and I'm starting to add in a very little amount of detail although I'm not getting too bogged down with it at this stage as the final details will go on in the last layers and there will be a few more layers to go this is about creating depth and building up texture still paying careful attention to my tonal values and the direction of the fur here you can see me gently dabbing the surface of the pastel with my finger this is to soften the detail in the layer so we are ready to start the next layer. This is, helps us to create depth in our portrait. Animals fur coats are made up of many layers and we want to replicate this in our drawing to try and achieve a re as realistic effect as possible. An alternative method I use to blending with my finger is glazing. Not only does this help soften the layer below but it also helps us change the tone. Glazing is very simple where you get the pencil of a particular colour that you want and you gently apply it backwards and forwards gently covering the area that you want to change the hue or the value of, very much as you would do with oils or acrylics. The idea is not to go in too hard because you don't want to completely cover the layer below, you just want to put a very, very subtle layer over the top to change the hue or the colour below. I will be doing a very short video to demonstrate what I mean by glazing, so I will pop a link below when I have done this for you. As you've seen, I still haven't really reached for the white much. I've used a mix of warm greys, cool greys. I've even used some blue and some warm ochre yellow, yellow colours. As I said before, I picked a fairly simple piece of white fur to draw from, but you may see purples, pinks, greens and many other colours reflected in white fur. I cannot reiterate enough how important it is to pay constant attention to your reference photo for the direction the fur is lying in, for the colours you need and the placement of the details. It can be easy to get lulled into a false sense of security and think that you know what you need to draw and where things go, but it often isn't the case. 
Here I'm using my Carbothello white pencil. I'm picking out some of the finer details now as we're getting closer to the finish. But this still isn't the final layer. I'll go in, pick out the highlights, re-establish the darks, pay attention to the detail and then soften it back and then reapply. Repeating this process until I'm happy with how the fur looks. Looking at my reference photo closely, I may bring in some more colours or I may not. Here you can see I used the saffron again and I would use my very cool blue greys for the cool areas, maybe even some blue. Drawing fur takes time and patience with careful attention to the colours and direction of the fur needed. Also not forgetting your values. Paying careful attention to your values and the placement and direction of the fur will make your subject look 3D. If you don't do this, your subject can look strange and out of proportion and also very flat. You want it to look like your subject is going to leap off the page or you could reach in and touch them and stroke them. As you can see, I'm using a white Carbothello pencil a lot more now. This is because I'm coming to the final details of the piece. I'm beginning to add the final strands of hair and pick out the highlights where I want them. I don't neglect my shadows and my darker values here either and I do tend to re-establish them as you can see now. But with pastels you tend to work dark to light and the highlights tend to go down last. I'm still softening and pushing back some of those details with the fingers as I still want to build up some depth and create layers, still more layers to this piece. Now I've picked up my Caran d'Ache white. This is the softest white pastel pencil I have and if you're going to buy one Caran d'Ache pastel pencil I really recommend you buy the white. It's absolutely brilliant for picking out the whitest of white highlights although it still probably isn't as good as a soft pastel stick but it really helps me define these white bright areas that I want in the final stages. However I do reiterate if you do want some really pure white areas it is important or quite important to establish them at the beginning of the portrait as it can be harder to get them later on as the white pastel often picks up the darker colours below therefore contaminating it and not giving you as a pure white as you might like. However I find the Carbothello is a very good pencil for really picking out the highlights if you want to stick to a pastel pencil or you could get a soft stick like a Schmincke or a um, unison to pick out those really bright highlights right at the end. Soft pastel sticks are amazing and they go over pastel pencil really well and are fabulous for picking out these final white, white bits that you want. I haven't used them here as I preserved the whitest bits I wanted right at the beginning and the Caran d'Ache pencil, white pencil, has been good enough for what I wanted for the final highlights. I'm now really beginning to apply the final touches and I'm using the white Caran d'Ache pencil to put in those really bright highlights that I want and the final wisps of hair that I want to pick out and define. Like I say, you could use a soft pastel stick for this if you find that the pencil isn't white enough to do so. And I'm going in, finishing touches, picking out some of the shadows again and softening any areas that I need to until I've achieved the effect that I want and I'm completely happy with the finished piece. I hope this tutorial has made you feel more confident when you attempt white fur next. If so, please pop a like below and subscribe to my channel for notifications of new videos, particularly a more in-depth tutorial on painting white fur coming soon. Thank you for watching and see you all soon.